Alright, what is up guys? Storm back here with another video, and uh, welcome back to another Storm Videos podcast episode. And in this one, I'm going to be going over 5 crazy Naruto theories. So, let's just jump right into this. So, in the number 5 spot, we have Metal Lee is the son of Rock Lee and Tenten. The new era has led to the emergence of the next generation of ninjas, and the number of characters that have been introduced from the get-go is rather hard to digest. One of these new characters is Metal Lee, who, no point for guessing, is the son of Rock Lee. However, his mother is never really specified, which has sparked a discussion regarding the identity of this mysterious female. Perhaps the most likely and obvious answer has to be Tenten. It pretty much makes perfect sense. After all, she's one of the few girls who's shown an active interest in Lee, even though it might have been strictly a friendly nature, and they both did have a pretty deep relationship near the end of the original series. Speaking of Rock Lee, his abilities, or in this case, inabilities, actually have something in common with another person. Now, in the number 4 spot is Hidan can't perform ninjutsu or genjutsu. It goes without saying that when it comes to freaky powers in Naruto, Hidan pretty much takes the cake with his self food vacation. Through a bloody ritual, Hidan can take control of a person's five senses. This coupled with his immortality can form a deadly combination. This was witnessed firsthand by Naruto fans when they had to sit through the tragic death of Asuma. A plausible theory that's been floating around the internet is that Hidan is actually unable to perform any ninjutsu or genjutsu. Just like Rock Lee and Might Guy, his powers might be formidable, but judging by the lack of any other abilities, it seems like that's all he has. Since we're already talking about a member of the Akatsuki, in the number 3 place we have all Akatsuki members represent a reason to wage war. Fan discoveries can be pretty cool at times, and this one is downright awesome. For the majority of the second part of Naruto, the Akatsuki functioned as the major antagonist of the story. While the origins might have seemed rather apparent at first glance, a Redditor posted a very convincing theory on Reddit that shined a light on the brilliance of Kishimoto. All members of the Akatsuki actually represent 8 major reasons to wage war. Pain and Konan represent the need for peace, Hidan portrays religion, Kakazu stands for money, Kisume shows infiltration, Itachi represents a need to protect, Sasori and Deidara both showcase diplomacy, Zetsu is for territory, and Obito slash Madara represents the need for a universal idealism. Now, in the number 2 spot, we have Madara resumed hostilities with Hashirama because he developed feelings for Mito Uzumaki. The animosity between Hashirama and Madara is legendary in the world of Naruto. Their hatred for each other is so great that they ended up in an earth-shattering battle even after their deaths. However, there was a time when, after the initial clan war, Madara and Hashirama were living together in harmony. But it didn't last, leading to the fight between the two men that led to the creation of what is now known as the Valley of the End. One of the major players in the early days of Kona, who was completely glossed over, is Mito Uzumaki, which is quite puzzling. What could have happened is that Madara was actually jealous of Hashirama's relationship with Mito and simply couldn't take it anymore after a while. And finally, let's move on to the number one spot. The world hasn't escaped the infinite Tsukiyomi. My concept of the infinite Tsukiyomi is extremely disturbing, and avoiding this fate is the entire reason why the fourth Shinobi World War happened to begin with. However, during one stage in the series, Obito actually manages to activate this powerful genjutsu, and a majority of people are caught in the technique. Thankfully, after a bunch of major events unravel, the infinite Tsukiyomi ends, and the world goes back to its normal life. Or does it? After all, what if the infinite Tsukiyomi actually took over the entire world, and the events that preceded were just projections of another person's reality? It's certainly possible, and it can truly prove to be a low note to end the series on. Perhaps that's why Kishimoto never really revealed uh, whether this actually happened or not. But in the end, who knows, these are all just crazy theories I found online. Now, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Also, let me know down in the comments below if you like me doing theories on anime like Naruto. And also let me know if you want me to actually start some kind of series where I go over different theories in anime. Sort of like uh, a game theory, but for anime. I know that already kind of exists, but it would be my own take on it. So if you want me to try that out, then let me know down below. Oh, one more thing, be sure to go follow me on Twitter and Instagram, the links to those will be down in the description as well. And as always, I will see you in the next video.
Peace.